Welcome back to MathX. In this video, I'm going to do this math competition question. The question is asking us to tile this three by six grid only using trominoes. And trominoes are three squares trace on the grid line. So for example, they could be like this, like this, horizontal or completely vertical. So for example, I could tile this grid maybe like this, okay? So how many ways are there to tile this three by six grid? So I've done a lot of different ways. The one that I think is the best is called recursive tiling. And uh, we're gonna learn that through one example. And if you have never uh, heard of it or you don't know how to use it, this is the place to learn it, okay? Let's get it started. I think it was Okay, in the example, we just saw that a two by three grid can be tiled in exactly uh, three ways, maybe like this, maybe like this two, and number three. So that's why I wrote it here, a two by three grid, okay, can be tiled in three ways. And we're going to focus on a three by three grid. Okay, and we're gonna use recursive tiling. Why is it recursive? Because when we're gonna do three by three, I'm gonna use that previous information, okay? And how do we start about this recursive tiling? We're going to start from the top left corner. You could also go this one, this corner is just fine. You just choose any of them. And ask yourself this question, how many ways can I just tile this square only, okay? So how many ways can we do that? Maybe we could go like this. Maybe we could go like this. Maybe we could go like that. Okay, maybe we could go like this. And maybe we could go like this. So the top left corner can be tiled in five different ways. So I'm going to write them like this, maybe horizontally, maybe vertically, maybe something like this, maybe something like that. And lastly, this one. As you see, there are gonna be five different ways of tiling them. Let me just write them a little to the right because I'm gonna need that space later. So it's gonna be like this, like this, and like this. And uh, we have to divide this question in five different cases, okay? It's gonna be easier than you think. Once you do a few, then you get a hang of it and you become quick. So, if the first one is tiled like this, what is left is a two by three grid. How many ways can I tile this? Recursive tiling. I know it's three. So I'm gonna go and write a three here. So what if it's going to be completely vertical like that? Again, a two by three grid is left. How many ways? Again, three. So you see, we're just gonna write them down like this. If I start by L shape something like this, okay? So what can fill this part? There's only one thing that can fill this. So only one way for this one, right? If I start like this, ah, now is the, the tricky part. So let's focus on this one, this tile. How many ways can I tile this part? It's gonna be two ways. Maybe I could go like this, or maybe I could go a horizontal like this. So it's gonna create two cases, maybe something like that, maybe something like this. So with this start, I'm gonna have two. So I'm gonna write it here. So two ways for this. And if I start like that, there's only one way to complete this, right? It's gonna be this one and then this vertical, so one way. So a three by three grid, okay, can be tiled in exactly three plus three plus one plus two plus one, which is going to be 10 ways, okay? And guess what? What is the next step? The next step, I'm gonna go by a four times three grid. And once we do it, we're going to use this information and this information, right? So, uh, that's why it's called recursive tiling. I'm going to need the previous information and add it up. So let me just clean. 
Okay, so we just need to repeat the same process for a four by three grid. What if we start by a horizontal line? Okay, and now let's focus on this. Ask yourself this, how many ways can I tell this is specific square? The answer to this will be two ways, right? If I go the first one like this, the next one, maybe I could go a vertical like this, or I could go something like that, right? Two ways and nothing else. Look again, when I do it like that, I have a two by three grid. So how many ways can I tell this? Again, three ways. So this is gonna give me a three. I'm gonna write a three like this. Now that I have this one, okay, this two that are left here, uh, let's see, maybe I could fill it like this, right? And can I fill it like that? No way, I can't do that. So these two are going to be uh, not like this, only like that. So the only way is gonna be this one right here and it's going to be like this. So there's gonna be only one way. So if I start by a horizontal line, there's going to be only four ways of tiling this grid. So I'm gonna go four. And if I go with the vertical, the answer is very easy. What is left? A three by three grid. Do we have it? Yes. So it's gonna be a 10. So this one, I'm gonna write this one as three plus one. The vertical one, I'm gonna write it as 110. Now what if I start by something like this? If I start by this, then you need to ask yourself, how can I fill this? How can I tell this a square? There is only one way. There's only one thing that is long enough to fit there. So it's going to be this one, right? So for this one, for this particular square, there are actually two ways. Maybe I go like this, that's one way. Or maybe I go horizontal and do it like this. So it's gonna be only two ways. So if I start like that, okay, the answer is gonna be only two. If I start like this, let's go and analyze this one. So let's focus on this. There's only two ways of tiling this. Maybe we could tile it like this. Maybe we tile it this way. If I tile it this way, this is a two by three grid. It's going to be three ways. And with this one, uh, let's see. With this one, how many ways can we fill this? It's going to be only like that. So only one way, right? So if we start with this, it's going to be a three plus one again. I try to write it this one. I'm I'm not going to write it as 4, rather I'm going to write it as 3 plus 1. The reason I write it as 3 plus 1, because this is this 3 over here that is being repeated. Okay, and lastly, what if I start this way? Okay, then this one, there is only one way to do this. A 2 by 3 grid is left, which is going to give us an additional 3. So I'm going to go write another 3 right over here. So let's add up all of these things together. A four, a four, and a 10, 20. It's gonna be a total of 23 for a four by three grid, okay? Okay, let's go and repeat the same steps real quick. Okay, if we start with a horizontal one like this, okay. So we have to focus on this square and ask ourselves how many way can I uh, tile this is square. This would be one way. Okay. This could also be another way. Or this particular square could be tiled with three horizontal trominoes. So, okay, it's going to give us three, uh, three cases. This, easy peasy, because there are three ways to uh, tile this one. So, this one is three. I'm going to clean it. So, I'm going to write the three though. So here for this one, this square is going to be tiled in exactly two ways. If I tile it like this, this is gonna give me a three, okay? And if I tile it like that, I think everything else will be forced. 
because this one has to be like this and like that. So this one will also give us a, this one was a three, this one was a three plus one. And uh, again, we have two ways of tiling this. Maybe if I tile it like that, it's gonna give me a three. If I tile it like this, okay, this one will be fours and this one will be four. So the first one is going to be three of this and two extra. So I'm gonna write it here. Let me clean up everything. It's gonna give us a three times three and then an additional two. Okay. If we start with a vertical tromino, a four by three grid will be left to tile and we already have it here. So this one is the easiest. So we're gonna have a 23. If I start like that, how many ways can I tile this one? There is only one way. Now for this part, is there only one way? No, there are two ways. If I tile it like that, it's gonna give us a three as you see over here, okay? And if I tile it this way, it's gonna give us something like this. So all of this is gonna give us a three plus one. So I'm gonna write it here, a three and a plus one. Now, if we start with this, this squared can be tiled in exactly two ways, maybe like that, maybe like this. So this one is easy because it's gonna give us 10 ways of doing it. And this one, uh, if I go like that, it's gonna give us a three. And if I go with the horizontal tromino, this will be forced, this will be forced. So this one is a 10 plus a three plus a one. So let me write it here, a 10, a three, and a one. So now if we start with this, this is also easy because this will be forced, a three by three tromino is left, only 10. So you could see that there is definitely a pattern. This one will just go with the previous one. Okay, if you start with a shape like this, a tromino like this, it's gonna give like that. So we could clearly see how they are actually being repeated now. So we just need to add them all together. It's gonna be a 23 and it's gonna be two tens, right? I'm gonna just write that as 20. It's gonna be five times three 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 it's gonna be a 15 and there will be some extras one two and four see okay and just we just have to add them all up this is gonna be 53 58 60 oh, i messed up 43 48 58 and 462 okay and you could see the pattern now. If you want to do programming, uh, then you have to just do each one individually and sum them up. Okay, now we just have to do uh, one more. Okay, now let's go and do this one last time for a six by three grid. Okay, we're gonna focus on that. So if I start horizontal with the horizontal trauma now, as we saw before, this is square. Uh, will can be filled and tiled in three different ways. Okay, maybe like this, maybe like this. Okay, so the first one is easy because uh, three by three is left, so it's just gonna be a 10. Now this one, remember this is square, can be uh, tiled two ways. This is one way, so it's gonna give us another 10. Or we could go with uh, something like this. I could go uh, with a horizontal one like that. And then for this one, we're gonna have two ways again. If I go like this, it's gonna be a plus three. If I go with the horizontal one, it's going to be <clears throat> only like this and only like this. So everything else will be forced. Now the, the middle one, so we have to be careful here. This one could be 
done exactly in two ways. If I go like this, I get another 10. If I go with the horizontal one, this one will go with the horizontal one too. But this one, this can be exactly tiled in two ways, maybe like this, maybe like this. So it's gonna give us an additional two, okay? So we just have to add all of these. So it's gonna be uh, three tens and uh, one three and again two plus one. So let me just go and clean everything here to prepare it for the next round. So it was like a 10 times three. Okay, there was one of the previous one of three like this, and there was a two and a one individual ones that were added. So if you start with a vertical one, it's the easiest because it's gonna be just the 62, the previous number, I'm gonna write the 62. If you start with a shape like this, then this one, as we saw before, will be forced. This one is gonna get two. If I go like that, easy. It's gonna get us a 10. If I go like this, okay, for this one, again, we're gonna have two ways. If I go like that, it's gonna give us a three. If I go with the horizontal, this one has to go, this one. So a 10 plus a three plus a one. Okay, so this one is gonna get us a 10 a three and a one. So uh, we have one more, this one is tricky, we have to be careful. If I go with this, this one can be tall exactly two ways, maybe like this, maybe like this. If I go like that, it's easy, a four by three grid, it's gonna give us a 23, okay. If I go like that, again, we're gonna have to, if I go like this, it's gonna give us a 10, and if I go horizontal like this, this one, if I go horizontal, did I write it like that? If I go like that, it's a 10. If I go like this, then this one will also be forced. So from here, we have to be careful. This one could be tiled in two ways, maybe like that, maybe like this. So it's going to give us an additional two. So. 23, a 10, and a two. Let me go write it. 23, a 10, and a two. And lastly, this one is easy because this one will just be, and it's gonna give us another 23, and it's gonna be all of it. So let's see here. Uh, this will help us to see the big picture of how each one is being repeated. Again, we're gonna have one of the previous ones. Okay, how many 23s? As before, only two 23s. What is before 23 is 10. How many 10s? Again, as before, we're supposed to have five, plus five times 10. Okay, what is tricky about this? Okay, it's gonna be the individual one. And we're gonna have two of this again, two of the threes. And we're gonna have some random ones. These are gonna make it uh, difficult, right? This is the difficult part. So it's gonna give us a plus six. See, now we know the pattern, right? That means one of this, okay, two of this, five of this, two of this, and then we're gonna have this six extra one that we could actually calculate, okay? So uh, let's just add them all together. So I think I've done this before. The sum of all of this is actually gonna be 170, which is gonna be uh, the answer to this problem. If you have different ways of doing this, uh, please write it in the comment section. And, but I wanted uh, everybody to see like how the recursive tiling work. You could also apply it to different kinds of uh, tiling questions.